Recorded live from the Engine Room in Broad Ripple, this is the Voices of Indie podcast hosted by Josh Gillespie. Voices of Indie is a show dedicated to giving you the opportunity to know the musical, visual, and theatrical arts of Indianapolis, Indiana. This week's guest is local visual artist Angie Stoltz, a.k.a. The Artsy Alchemist. And today's episode is sponsored by the Indi- by Indianapolis Independent Entertainment. IIE LLC's goal is to help grow local DIY artists, freelancers, and businesses within Indianapolis and generate more paying creative opportunities. Their mission is simple, to establish a network of creatives who excel in areas of need and connecting them with other network members. This way, they can help to expand the local arts and music scenes. IIE believes that by eliminating some of the intimidating barriers within the entertainment industry, more opportunities will be produced for local freelancers and businesses. This will help Indianapolis become the place to go for arts and music in in the Midwest. If you are interested in learning more, go to their website, IndieIndieENT.com. That's I-N-D-Y-I-N-D-I-E-E-N-T.com. And fill out a free application to discuss how you and IIE can redefine making it together. And like I said, this week's guest is the Artsy Alchemist. Hi. Hi. How are you doing, Angie? I'm doing all right, Josh. How are you? I'm doing just peachy. I'm getting over a head cold. That's fine. Well, a full body cold, actually. More like it. So if I sound a little stuffy, that's why. Okay. Um, so I apologize to my listeners if they're like, gosh, Josh, why do you sound, sound nasty? Awful, dude. Yeah. God, we have to listen to this. Right? <laughs> man, I only was listening for Angie, but man, you, this, this voice is just terrible. God. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm glad that you're on the show. I appreciate you having me. This is awesome. Yes. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm not as familiar with your work. That's fair. And, but uh, to be fair, I'm not familiar with a lot of people's work, which is why I'm doing the podcast to begin with. Um, and I find that there are so many nooks and crannies within Indianapolis, especially within the visual arts. Yes. That it is you could barely scratch the surface and still consume a ton of material. Yeah. So tell me about what you do and where you're located. Okay. Uh, I am located on the east side of Indianapolis. What I do is currently I create what I create. (laughs) Sure. Um, My main medium right now is acrylic, but I want to dabble with a bunch of things. I'm a self-taught artist, so like Mm -hmm. it is whatever I'm... Learning is kind of what's what's transpiring out of that. Sure. Um, what is it about acrylic that that is drawing you into that that particular medium right now? I feel like it's very forgiving. You oh, know, okay. If you mess up, just take a blow dryer and dry it real quick, and you can paint right over that. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's very easy to fix your mistakes. Whereas, sure. Um, although I haven't dabbled much with oil, so I'm not an expert by any means, but that you know, is a different bit of a process. However, you can like blend much, whatever. The, it's a whole thing. But uh, for right now, I just really, it's what I started with, and it's just what I've gotten very comfortable with. Mm-hmm. So. Have you worked with any other kinds of material? Do you get into the, um, and I'm going to completely forget the, the phrase here, and I know that real artists will be like, Josh, what's wrong with you? Uh, mixed media. There we go. That's what have you do you ever dabble with mixed well actually I feel like you have. Are you talking about my the little record? Yes, I am talking about the little record. I loved that piece that you did. If you haven't if you're not familiar with the record, check out Angie's uh, Instagram page, the Artsy Alchemist. It's actually the most recent post. Um, and you it's it's acrylic on so it's on a, vinyl. It's acrylic on vinyl and it's layers of resin. So I guess that could be considered mixed media. Yeah. I'm using resin and acrylic. Um, there was going to be, it, it ended up, uh, the, the show got canceled, unfortunately, but I'm grateful that it even got, like, announced because I would have never, I don't think I would have ever thought to paint on a vinyl record before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been super fun. I have, like, a whole stack of vinyl records I plan to do more of these with. I hope they're Goodwill records. Like, they're just, <laughs> not, not, like, legit, like. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> no, I like. And, and I hope not like you know, like Beatles or Sex Pistols singles. No, no they're just no, they're no, just. However, the one I so I got a stack um, on McCarty online. Oh really? And, yeah, and so like some of them are like things like I have never heard this. There have been some of them though that were like like Louis Armstrong, What a Wonderful ah. World. I'm like, oh, actually, like that's actually a really good idea to base off of that song. No, I yes, no, side. I can follow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the one that you were talking about, it's uh, layers of, it's the first time I had done it, it was layers of resin with painting. So the the effect is supposed to try to make a 3D effect. I only did about seven layers. So like 
there's a 3D effect to it. So like you start with your background and then you do a resin layer and that takes time because it's chemistry. You have to let it cure for 24 hours. Oh my goodness. And then you do your next layer and you really have to kind of think very backwards almost have not come backwards, but you've really had to well, plan out how yeah. you're going to do this to make things look like they're coming at you. Mm -hmm. Um, and so then you do your next layer and you let it dry and the next layer let it dry. And, yeah. Is it easy to let inspiration last that long? Because I, I mean, I would honestly get so frustrated with the process. Honestly, that's not, like I, inspiration is not an issue for me. It's always finding the time to like in my because I'm a, also a single mom and been working you know, work and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. finding time to do my inspiration has always been my issue, ah. not the inspiration itself. I have a, a list on my phone right now of painting ideas and like all it is is just a little blurb. I know exactly what it is in my mind. Mm -hmm. It's just creating the space and the time to, to get it out. The inspiration is very, it's there. It's That's just, amazing. Well, I, you, you, uh, recently participated in, um, I, I E had an event at yes, provider so fun. and you were like, like painting on the spot. Like, did yeah. you, did you already know what you were going to be doing not going really. in? Absolutely not. Did you take in like where the music that was surrounding well, you, did that inspire? Like what? I should rephrase that. I did have a, a slight clue, but I had no clue how it was going to come out, which is usually how, Oftentimes it goes. Um, I knew the whole theme was spooky vibes. So yeah. I, knew I wanted to do something kind of spooky esque. And I typically don't do like monochromatic black and white. Like I do very vibrant colors. I don't use black in any of my paintings. I make things look black, but it's not black. It's like, sure. Color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a very different thing in of itself. But like the whole piece of what it was going to be, not really. I kind of sketched something out real quick on the spot there and then just got in and, and, and did it. Did you have people bothering you or like, how does that, when you, you're so, in a crowd. So I mean, well, like, how do you. With that set up, like, I didn't know if people were behind me because especially it got, where it's October. So it got dark pretty quickly. Yeah. So by the time, you know, I started getting dark, I had a light behind me. I couldn't see behind me at all. And I was just in the zone anyway. Oh. I only knew if somebody was behind me, if I heard them like looking through my prints or something like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somebody back there. <laughs> but yeah. Not, yeah, no, I, I, cause I know that I had people come up afterwards and said that they'd, they'd watch, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff, but. No, I didn't know. I was in, I was in my zone. That is amazing. What's it like to get into the zone? I, I mean, you're a musician. I'm sure you have the same experience. Well, for me, it's it's different. Okay. In that, because writing songs, coming up with the tune is not difficult for me. See, I find that fascinating. Like you just said, like how I keep inspiration coming up with a t and my own original tune. I I love music, but I can not come up with my own original tune. Well, and, and it's. And I can get a vibe from a tune. Okay. But the lyrics are gonna, just going to fester for the longest amount of time. And admittedly, I'm kind of bad at this. Sometimes I wait for inspiration, which if you wait for inspiration, that's just, that's the dumbest yeah, thing to yeah. do. <laughs> the absolute dumbest thing to do. And so the times that I've actually kind of just forced myself to sit down and go through my list of of ideas or... Um, you're always collecting ideas and, and, and thoughts and phrases and all things like that. And I have to imagine that's kind of similar yeah. in, in the visual arts realm. You're collecting thoughts and picking up pieces here and there. You're like, Oh, I think I want to do something with that. Yeah. Um, and so I, I have this large collection of lines and I just hope that I can get something from that. And last month, last month is October. So in September, um, I actually wrote two songs in a month, which was just like gangbusters for me. It's like I was producing a whole ton. Um, but now it's like I, I kind of have a deadline for myself to write six by the end of the year, which on top of work, on top of being a parent, it's like, why did I think I should do that? But I still haven't convinced myself that it's a bad idea. I do better with deadlines. Like when I know I have a first Friday coming up, that is when I get like the most like productive, get things done. Really? Because first Friday coming up, I have to have something new. I can't keep showing up with the same stuff over and over again. Well, so no, that's true. Yeah. It helps me with the, having a deadline helps me on the production aspect of it. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm kind of working on a coffee shop tour. Oh, did I do it? getting ahead of myself um <laughs> but uh with kenny okay and 
yeah, it's like, well, I don't want to be playing the same songs all the time. I mean, I have, I have, you know, I have my album and I have stuff that I'm working on for my next album, but it's like, I want stuff on top of that, you know, and so that I can give kind of a well-rounded view of what to expect from me. Um, and I assume that's kind of similar to how you approach things that you want to have a well-rounded view of what to expect from you, I guess, yeah, I when you're, know. when you're doing a show. Well, like a one hit wonder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Well, I would love to be a one hit wonder <laughs> because right. that means that money's coming that's in. That's true. But, yes. <laughs> but, but nonetheless, yes, I would like, uh, uh, I would like to be at least more well-rounded with, with what I, you know, present to, to an audience. And so uh, I did notice that you did have some of your, like your works with you while you were working on that particular piece. Yeah. i had had a first Friday just the night before. So oh, it's already oh. in my car. So I'm like, I didn't, cause I really didn't know what that event, what I was really getting into it was my first time doing it. I know yeah. another artist who has kind of a, a relationship with a band that he goes with them to different festivals. Seriously. Stuff. Yes. It's a thing. That like, is cool. I know. I, that's what I want to do too. Like I've, I, I really, and like you asked about like getting in the zone, like I, how to describe it. Like it, A, I thoroughly enjoyed that the music was there, but like it is a checking out of t- time doesn't exist anymore. To be perfectly honest, I wow. am very focused in on, which is hard for me to do. I am typically spazzy all over the place. Well, and if you have stuff going on all around you, but I don't even notice that back there. Really? Like th- exactly. Like there was like, I, there were people I know that they're like, I was completely, I was focusing. I I had a time limit on how to get this. Oh, wow. Done. Yeah. Um, yeah. You had that on top of you yeah, as well. Yeah. And your canvas wasn't small. Yeah, it was the biggest canvas I've ever done. So the artist that I was talking about that he has, he does this with an, another band. I actually um, saw him the night before at, at his first Friday event. And he mm-hmm. was the one that recommended, cause I was just going to do a 16 by 20 because that was what I was comfortable with. Yeah. He was the one that recommended you need to go larger than that because you are visual people are there to see what and you first stand in front of a 16 by 20 they're not going to be able to see what you're working on and so as one who has a bunch of 16 by 20 posters because i love tour posters because it's it to me that is a kind of art it it, in and of itself absolutely and i have a ton of 16 by 20s yeah that's kind of small if you're if you're standing in front of it yeah and so he recommend he recommended a uh four foot by six foot wow four foot by three foot sorry 36 by 48 I was not comfortable with that, so I went with 24 by 36, which was still the largest thing I've ever did. I did invent by though a 48 by 36 canvas. That is a that's going to happen at some point. I don't know. It when, is. But it's oh, going to happen. Oh, that I sounds really like fun. I doing the, the, that large, but yeah, it was a big. It was a big canvas. It was a big canvas. Yeah. So did you, did you let? I mean, I know that you were in the zone. Time didn't exist, which is wow. I mean, that is really in the zone. But do you let like? There was music going on. Did you let that inspire you or did you just kind of like, I know I'm going into this. I have an idea and I'm going to run with it and just kind of tune everything out. It was the latter. Um, Cause I, I, like I said, at the very beginning, I created a very quick, like two minute plan of a, what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I just ran with that. Um, the actual, the, the, the image that I finally, that I just, came up with and chose bomb was actually inspired by a cemetery where i grew up it's in the middle of a woods and like it has like this whole haunted story with it that there's you know oh really yeah nice. and so like that's what it was based off of but like it, the music was fun to jam to yeah was, yeah but like it w- wasn't like there are a lot of spooky little cemeteries like that in yeah. indiana oh yeah and in the randomest places yeah this is literally in the middle of a, in a, a middle of a wood you go down like this really narrow like barely can get a car down type of little p- path wow and then there's this opening and there's a cemetery just in the middle of the woods quite beautiful it's like 1800s like old timey yeah cemetery. yeah there are a couple there's one in geist that's just like right yeah. next to the road oh you wouldn't expect that in geist. you don't know you would not <laughs> expect that in geist but you know and then i remember i grew up in fishers okay. and uh there's a neighborhood there called sunblast it's probably like one of the original neighborhoods and so it's massive this massive neighborhood um, but right near a retention pond is this cemetery. And I'm thinking, why would you build a neighborhood around a cemetery? It's not very large. That's good. As, as you know, cemeteries are want right. to be in Indiana, unless it's like attached to a church where they're huge. 
and even then that you're going to do a rural one. Right. Um, but yeah, most of them are just kind of tiny. I enjoy them. <laughs> yeah, no, they're so, enjoy them. <laughs> they're so cool. I remember when they, there was one, um, right next to I-69, right near 465 where it, where it splits off to 465. And when they had to expand, uh, an exit, they actually had to literally move the yeah, cemetery. All kinds of paperwork involved with that. Right, because you have to get permission. Uh -huh. And that was a cemetery from the 1800s. Yeah. And I'm thinking... Track down that family. Right? Good luck. <laughs> right. Apparently they did. I don't know how that Impressive. worked, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really liked how yours came out and yes. how it was... Um, it was that kind of cemetery. I could tell, like, going in there, it's like, ooh, it's kind of a, like a creepy fun spooky little vibes. That's what spooky I'm going for. yeah That's spooky what I'm vibes for. thanks i really did enjoy that what else have you been working on lately that that um as you prepare for first fridays i know that there was recently a first friday do you do you um have a display at a regular first friday like a regular display going on every friday uh every first friday or it's kind of hit or miss i have been doing the beach grove one quite often honestly because i don't have a booth fee which is really nice. Nice. So, I mean, it, yeah. you, uh, it, and it's always just a, a, a good atmosphere there. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to have some regularity at another studio, but they've just recently, I don't want to. Uh, That's okay. fine. Yep. Um, so, no, it's kind of hit or miss. I haven't really found a, like, 100% all the time mm -hmm. spot, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. um, as far as things I'm working on, I have another one of those resin uh, vinyl disc ones. That one's completely different than the the campfire mountain one it's a mm -hmm. little mushroom house like little fairy type of thing like that um i have this big piece that i've been working on for quite a while and i it was supposed to i'd put a deadline back to deadlines yeah I'd put a deadline on myself to have it done by this past first friday it did not happen it has to be done by this next first one uh even if i don't set up somewhere because uh, it's this huge piece that is based off of the frame that i found at a garage sale this frame is like wavy like this oh. and so like i have a whole wavy scene happening and like there was this one side of the painting that like i just it wasn't going how i wanted to so that's why i got pushed to the side i was like i'm done with this for a while and i'm sure. back to it to it's got to get finished because it's yeah it's, it's like it's like 80 percent there it's just a little bit more to go do you find that when you are working on something it can be inspired by something as simple as a frame Oh yeah, like that whole that whole yeah, and that was at that point in time was the largest canvas I'd worked on. This is twenty by twenty. It was before I did the the um, the spooky uh, one. Yeah, the spooky one. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that whole that whole painting was mm -hmm. meant to go with that for sure. Music, honestly, is one of my biggest. I have a one of my, on my list. Like I have a whole music ly lyrics series that I want to do. Yes, you. I, I I was actually, and I'll I'll be honest. I was cheating. I was going through your Instagram just Stop before you arrived. Time. <laughs> um and the you were working on a piece that was inspired by a song by Hailstorm. Yes. And but you couldn't. I couldn't freaking play that song because I don't have it on there. So I had to read the lyrics, which is funny because that's a thing that I've done uh as a joke with my friends for like a really long time, except I've read there's a rapper called Two Chain. Oh yeah. Have you ever read his lyrics? Uh, no. I highly recommend <laughs> just very seriously reading his lyrics. Because, very seriously? Because it's so hilarious. <laughs> well, <laughs> here, here's the thing is that I know that, so, you know, some of the music that my kids listen to will have two chains in it. Oh, okay. And sometimes it says a guest, but I like how he announces himself because it's always two chains. Oh, I, like, I haven't really listened to much of his <laughs> stuff. I like to just read his lyrics. <laughs> no, it's, it's just like he did something with, um, Fall Out Boy. Okay. And really? yeah, I think. I think it was Fallout Boy. Wow. Okay. Um, and it like it was it was a breakdown section, and Two Chains just shows up, but he announces That's himself. Hilarious. Well, of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, this is this is fantastic. It's and so it just kind of became a thing in the house, just being like Two Chains. That's great. <laughs> oh, that makes me happy. But yeah, the, yeah. The the hailstorm one that I read, like, like that's I have a that's on that list of I have many that I want to do that off because of, like. For me, at least, I don't know if everybody who consumes music gets this, but I get a lot of visualizations out of music. Oh, yeah. Out of the lyrics, out of the, the, the sounds of it. Like, there's always, and that's always been my, like, music has been a therapy for me, like, since I've been a kid. Like, it's a way to connect, and I think the visual aspect of a, of a song can be very interpreted so differently and add a whole new layer to it, and that's something I really want to continue to expand upon as I 
create things. Do you, have you ever connected with a, a musical artist to do like what you were talking about with your friend who is who who paints for bands? Not yet, but I am very open to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it sounds like you'd be a perfect. Uh, I would love to do that. Yeah, uh, a perfect opportunity to do something. To, like. I don't know how to approach that. I don't know if I just show up to some random band's show, be like, hey. Well, for the bands listening to this, <laughs> for anybody listening to this. I can add a visual component a vis- And I think that that's, uh, that's honestly something that Kenny is wanting to do with the tour that I'm working on. Right on. So um, when he mentioned that, I was like, oh, well, you've done this before. And I liked what you did. So we'll see if there's a, a, yeah. a fit there. Um but I think that's that's fantastic because, like I said, you know, when I look at band art, like one of my yeah. favorite posters that I have awesome. is a Soundgarden poster from a show that they did in Vegas. And they're all like one one guy is an alien, one guy is a robot, one guy is dressed like zombie Elvis, and I forget the other one is. Um, but they have all the Vegas look to this poster uh including like um short little people but dressed like um strippers <laughs> <laughs> and 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 a four-eyed white tiger uh yeah right on but then right at the top a black sun which is their song yeah, black yeah. hole sun and i was just like this That's is beautiful. awesome yeah. And it, although the coloring, the shading on it is great. That is awesome. Um, and so I love picking this up. And and, and I, I've picked up, I really got into tour posters because more for the artistic perspective of it. Because there are people out there who do some amazing work. Uh, like Zombie Yeti. I don't know if you're familiar with Zombie Yeti. Actually, Zombie Yeti is from Indiana. Okay. Um, check him out because Yeti. Okay. It, it's... I, I can't even begin to describe his work, but he has worked with bands. That's awesome. Uh, Primus, the Melvins, Metallica. Um, minor bands. Minor bands, no, yeah. But then he also does work for pinball machines. And he's designed That's pinball so cool. machines. Yeah, I mean, it, it, so, I mean, he does tour posters, but then he does pinball machines. He does seemingly everything. Uh, and he also worked with Pearl Jam. Um Again, Meh. minor bands. Meh. Meh. <laughs> Who are these guys? Yeah, I've never heard of any of them. Right. <laughs> um, and and his work is very unique. I'll put it that way. Okay. Um, but yeah, Zombie Yeti. All right. Check him out. We'll do. Anybody who's listened to this who has never heard of him, check him out. Sure. And his posters, like if he go- puts them on sale, they're gone like that. That's so cool. Because uh, he had a Foo Fighters poster that I really wanted. And oh, like, is, is it limited edition? Like, oh yeah, like, there's not like mass prints of it. It's no, only so, oh, that's that's nice. Oh yeah, so he'll do like fifty. Oh dang! And so as soon as they go on sale, they are literally gone. Like, cause he'll announce it, and people will be sitting on his website just waiting, and then they go sell them on eBay for, <coughs> excuse me, three four times the price. Just because yeah. they can, because can. people they can. will buy it. So. Oh yeah, they will. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's too rich for my blood. I just, <laughs> I just want to get there in time for the forty dollar one, you know, and 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 hope that that I, I somehow land one of these. And um, I want to say he did. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But but the point is, is that I've loved some of the work. And it doesn't have to be crazy. It can be very serene. There's, um, well, there's a, so uh, there's a band of that I thoroughly enjoy called We Are, we Are Scientists. Mm-hmm. I found them way back in the day. I don't even know if Stumble Upon is still a thing, but there used to be this little. I remember Stumble, Stumble Upon. upon. Yes. Great. Oh my gosh. So I stumbled upon a uh, the top fifty band posters. Yeah. Of, and. It was their post. I never heard of them, but it was their poster that I found. Like, I need, I, I love the name, I love the poster, and I check them out, and I fucking love their music now. Yeah. So, like, yeah. It, and it was, that, really, it'll, it was really something simple. as simple as that will do yeah. that. Yeah. It'll turn you onto a band. Absolutely. Because if they can have good art, then, then they must be a good band. Then, usually. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> Not always, but usually. Well, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's very true. Arcade Fire, they're really good. one that has a oh. fantastic. Uh, yes. Posters. 
they were on that list. I remember them quite a bit, but yeah. There, there was. I have one of theirs that I really like. It's from a show they did in, in Paris. Nice. Um, and the one band that I that I absolutely love to this day, they they're no longer around. REM. Oh yeah. Um, but they had a they had a poster that I found on their website from a show in Prague, and I ordered it. And apparently I ordered it from the international store, but it got lost in the mail. So it never arrived. It was one of the most beautiful things that I've seen. And I find, annoyingly enough, that the most fascinating posters are the European posters. Yeah, but they also get the good tours, too. They do get the good tours. Yeah, Yeah, I know. Uh. That, or Americans. <laughs> I know. Like, I mean, America, we used to get all the good tours, and now they're all, they're all over in Europe. Yeah. There's... Europeans get to enjoy all, all, our, all our all our good bands. Yeah, pretty much. We kicked them out, apparently, or something. I don't know. Something. Yeah. Musical tastes change. But <laughs> strange, it just really changed. Yeah, it has. Really changed. But, no, Arcade Fire has always had some uh, good work. And... I'm trying to remember the last show that I went to that I got a poster that I was just like, I must have this. Because I always go to a show looking for a poster. Nice. And they're not always great. And not always, because like, not all, they don't always have posters either. Like, I feel no, like they don't. That's becoming less and less of a thing. Because me and my best friend, we get a lot of concerts. Like, that's, that's mm-hmm. a um, And yeah, I don't recall seeing i've been so many concerts in the past you know five six years i don't recall seeing a whole lot of tour posters in well the section a lot of the ones that i've been to now they just do that kind of collective here's an image and here's all the dates it's the album that they're touring with yeah often yeah and dates. And, and then and then the dates and i mean that's fine typically i'll get that because i like to see indianapolis listed um yes i'm a homer for this town i don't know why I, well, I've lived here my entire life, so that's probably why. But um, yeah, but there's people that lived here their whole lives that are like, forget this place, I want to get out, but they never leave. So but exactly, exactly. No, I I love positive. it. I love seeing Indianapolis on TV. I don't care for racing, but I'll watch the Indy 500. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> Indy's on TV. <laughs> um, but so like, yeah, if it has Indianapolis, so like, uh, for instance, um, when Metallica came, last came to town. Um, they had two tour posters and, and again, they had one, one for each, like a different look for each city that they went to. And for Indianapolis, the one that they chose for us was a spider. And I'm not a fan of spiders, putting it mildly. (laughs) Um, so I was like, oh, that, that, I'm not getting this now. I'm not getting that. But... The fan club had their own poster, which was so much better and so much cooler. Nice. Um, and so I got that one instead. I don't know what how that would, one was even available because that's an even lesser print. But that's one thing that I love about bands is that if they go to the ones that don't put out a picture and then their, their tour schedule – um, the ones that do individual ones for each town, cool. for each it is so very cool, and it connects with the fans too. Like it really that, does. That's a different way that, to connect with the fans, the visual way to connect with the fans, not just you know, lyrically or musically. It absolutely, and I love that visual way to to be able to to connect with fans. Um, it's way one reason is why I like tour shirts. You know, I'm a I'm a sucker for for band shirts and for I for band a, posters. I've oddly came up with. Over time, this rule evolved where if I've seen a band three times, I have to buy a shirt. So oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. That's fine. But that's a low bar. I mean, that, excuse me. That's a high bar. For me, it's just like if I've seen them once oh. if, if, and then I enjoy the show, I'll get something. That's fair. Which is, which is probably what most people do. I, yeah. It happened. It was actually Hailstorm, oddly enough. Oh. Back to, it was my third yeah. time. I'm like, well, I've seen them three times. I need to do something. Like, and they had this really cool skull rose shirt thing happening nice like that, and then it just kind of snowballed from there nice you surprised how many bands i've seen three times now they've been like opening acts and i told them man it was like it's that is you. that is cool yeah. who have you seen that's been opening that later became a uh the main act oh, man you're putting me on the spot i know that I've ha- i have but i know, can't i am putting you on, you the, are spot. Putting me on the spot sorry i am blanking out i don't know <laughs> see this is why i actually have an email draft in one of my inboxes 
that just has a list of every single yeah, concert that I've of, seen that I that I keep I had track. A friend who had an Excel spreadsheet where he did the same thing. Yeah. And then you do you you find the set list for for those particulars. I don't know if he did the set list, but I know he had a very large and very elaborate Excel spreadsheet. I was very impressed with. I'm not that organized. I hate Excel, so it's just an <laughs> it's just an email draft, That's and fair. I swear if I accidentally delete that thing, That's it's going to so kill sad. me. Because yeah. there are uh, I think eighty some concerts on there, That's and awesome. yes, there are a number of that I've seen multiple times um like so uh I, i've seen i saw rush three times huge rush fan uh, my brother who's 10 years older than me raised me on rush that makes sense yes um and they always had a tour book like really well done i mean they did not skimp on these things what are you putting a book it tour well you put photos and so it, it was it was um what i presume of them getting ready for the tour or something because you couldn't have these pictures before the tour started right um but it was Hugh Syme who did a lot of their artwork uh would put in so it'd be photographs it would be artwork That's it would cool. be oh it was so cool That's super cool um and it would be uh, history of the band. That's cool. Yeah. Like, so my first tour that I saw them on was in 94 was for their counterparts album. And so they had like pictures of when they were kids, you know, and other things like, that. well, maybe that was for, maybe not that one, but it was for the following one. It was for the following one. Um, test for echo. Anyway, the point is, is that every time I went to a rush show, I had to get one of those. My brother had one dating back from the eighties you know, for the Grace Under Pressure tour, which was probably like 82, 83. I mean, they've been doing it that That's long. Cool, and they did it all the way. It was different every tour. Different every That's tour. So cool. And they did one for their final tour, um, which did not come through Indianapolis. So the final show that I saw them in Indianapolis, which I took my then five-year-old son to, his first show was Rush. Um, and he got a T-shirt there that still fits him to this day. And, that's impressive. And good it's job. and it's ten years later. <laughs> that's good, good job. <laughs> yeah, that's a, and it's a fact that it's still in good condition, um, but it still fits them to this day. Um, but yeah, that's I've always been fascinated by the artwork from bands because you the the thought that you have to put into that. Oh, that's art inspiring art. I think the art that inspires mm -hmm. art is some of the you know, the coolest art out there. Like I don't know. That's a creative hodgepodge of all in one, you know? It is. It is. Well, and I think that's, that's you know, to kind of bring it full circle is kind of why when I put together this podcast, I was like, I can't just talk to musicians. Even though we've been talking a lot about music <laughs> we today. Have, but that's okay. But we, I don't want to talk about just music because that's not the only voice. I want, you know, visual art. Theatrical art; these are all voices, and they're all arts, and they all and they all are arts, and they all connect. And the, mm -hmm. the inspiration. So, I wanted to talk to you about some of your inspirations. Like, you know, if you're self-taught, do what do you what have you done? Like, are there specific artists that you have, that have caught your eye over time, or is it just kind of more of a self-inspiration that has kind of led you to to the work that you do? Definitely self-inspiration. Like, I okay. I'm, if I want to say I feel bad, but I'm definitely not one of those artists that can like, because again, I, I have no formal education. My, my educational background was biology and chemistry. I was a pre-veterinary medicine student. Like that was my college background. I've seen those things. There's some art in, <laughs> in, in the way that spores and fungus looks. I'll Absolutely. just say. <laughs> there is, there is art in biology as well. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't have that like art history background. I've heard yeah. some artists like, oh, when I saw blah, 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 and I take inspiration. I, I don't, like I, I can see photo, I can see paintings and I can, they're beautiful, but like, I'm not. I'm not the type of person that I can be like, oh, this person's mm -hmm. style is what influences this. Like, I, it's all. It's all what comes out. It's all what comes out. And I never know what sometimes what comes out. Like, um, there's a, well, it's my logo on Instagram, but I did like three different ones of the like, biggest tree floating on like uh, dirt mm -hmm. of, of painting. And that, like the. The spark of inspiration behind that one was a friend of mine at the time had asked if I could maybe do um, pieces she was organizing uh, for the company or the organization that she worked with, a charity thing where they was going to give away five different uh, 
five different gifts to um, um, people who had won awards or whatever in their organization. Anyways, so the the whole theme of the thing was called Elevate. Mm -hmm. And so that tree floating out of that simply came from that word of Elevate. Oh, that's so cool. I don't have words. I don't know. No, no, no. no. That's <laughs> no. I, I love that. That like you know, um, I, I love that people can be inspired by you know artists from the past or artists or I artists do, yeah, from the. Absolutely. But to be able to kind of come up with things on your own, you know, to let that artistic inspiration uh, to steal the word here truly elevate out of you um, and and pour out onto a canvas. Whatever your canvas may be, be it a, a traditional canvas or vinyl, right, um, is is fascinating, and and to know that inspiration can truly come from anywhere. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah. There's no limit on that, and I have a hard time verbally. And this is a verbal thing that we're doing right now. I have a hard time verbally describing how I get to some of the things that I do because I don't really. Don't really know. One of my favorite pieces that I love to have at, going back to like First Fridays, there is one that I do like to have displayed quite often. Um, and it's, I, I call it the piece Letting Go, and it's this hooded figure, and it's holding a gray balloon, and there's these bright neon balloons that are flo floating away. That entire piece, I had no plan whatsoever. I just wanted to go in and do something, and that came out, and I love the symbology behind it for me the symbology mm. behind it for me is that like the obvious things the bright brightly colored balloons those are those are the easy things in life to let go of it's the stuff in the gray that's the hard stuff to let go of but that piece will either i enjoy one of the things i enjoy most about first fridays or just having my art out with the public and interacting with people in the public is the conversations that happen mm -hmm. that's that's and that piece will either people will look at it like I don't get that. That's weird. Or, <laughs> or it's the it deeply impacts them in some, and it's different really with every single person. Like there was this one lady who like really got touched by it, ended up buying the print of it, bought some little stuff on me, and then also commissioned me to do something for, because it inspired her of it, it connected with her that she just lost her nephew, I believe. And oh my! Right, like ugh, oh talk my. about like, yeah, somebody telling you that like. Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go away now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. That, that's, but that, as far as like what inspired that, that just like, that just kind of plopped out. Yeah. Does that happen often where you just kind of go into something without any kind of specific inspiration? You just start painting and something shows up? Yes and no. Like okay. sometimes I'll have like a tiny bit of like a direction of where I want to go. It almost always, though, never comes out how I have it up in here. Like, of course, yeah, what mm -hmm. comes out on the, is never what I visualize it for it to be. Um, but there are some times, well, like with the spooky one, like it was just a very quick, like, eh, this is what's happening, and then we'll just mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see what happens from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed you also have done a lot of, um, and this was on your Instagram feed, but you do a lot of comic. Prints, sort of like you know, uh, so like fan art type stuff. Yeah, a little fan art type stuff. A lot of that's for my daughter. Uh, okay, <laughs> she gets a Christmas pr painting every year. She Aww. expects it at this point. If I don't do it, she's going to be very upset with me. Sure. <laughs> so is the Pikachu one that you did? Uh, Pikachu was uh, uh, inspired by her. She actually so I was going to uh, I wanted to do some. Um, they're inspired by her, and I wanted to just do some smaller. Uh, P uh, Pokemon ones, and I was wanted to do Detective Pikachu because he's so stinking cute. The holding the little <laughs> coffee mug was her idea, and like she, oh yeah, that. yeah, yeah, I love it. And it's like she even sketched that out and everything. But so she has a in her room. She has a very nice Eevee. She has a Aang from uh, Avatar. Oh wow! Like um, last year, she got because she very much has gotten into anime the past couple years. So last year she got, um, there's a show called fairy tale mm -hmm. and they have, did you say, you know, the show I'm, I'm, my son's been into, into anime. You know, the so it's in the show, the little, the, the little cats that they have, like she got the three little cats. That okay. Her, yeah. Very cool. So that's where those come from. Really. It's my, it's my kid. Aww. Um, or, uh, I have a self adopted brother in Chicago. He, uh, very much into Pokemon, so that was one of his Christmas gifts. Was uh, oh, that's nice. I know. Right? So tell him that <laughs> 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 he got a oh, frack. What is the boy? Whatever P 
Pikachu's. Oh, the, the his, his the the human that goes yeah, with them. The human that goes with Pikachu. I don't know, yeah, but I know who you're talking about with the red, white, and blue hat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he got one of those. But yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. For some reason, I'm thinking Sam or Ash, and I know it's, it's Ash. Is it Ash? I think so. I think it's Ash. We're gonna say it's Ash. Let's just yeah. We'll just for the fun of it, we'll call it. We'll, we'll call the guys Ash. Ash, yeah. Ash and Pokemon, uh, Pikachu. Yes. There we go. There we go. That's how it works. But yeah. That's where this come from. I mean, pretty much for, for for family, for loved ones. Yeah, yeah, for loved ones. Yeah. That's well, that's so cool. Yeah, well, you know, to kind of you know, it, it's almost a bit of a lighthearted. It is e- exercise. And it's a really good artistic exercise on like color matching, which I love to do. Like I find that ah. extremely fun um, to get the colors you know just right because those are already created like that. Yeah, like, I'm copying up somebody else's artistic work already, so like to to match those colors perfectly. Sure, it's. it's it's kind of like a modern version of like old school back in the day when they'd go look at the masters and copy the masters. I'm just, you know. Oh, yes. A, yeah. Anime artist instead. <laughs> it's a different kind of master. It's a different kind. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so tell me, what are you working on now? And what, where can people find your work? Fabulous question. So the goal of this year, which has not been completed yet is to have like an online shop and presence um i'm still working on that to be perfectly honest this year i like i quit my my 11 year chemist gig oh wow gym. right like that was my, my my fancy career so like this year has been very like just trying to get my just mm-hmm. trying to get my life together <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure yeah yeah and stuff um no but. i i get it <laughs> i mean because i within the last few years i've kind of gone through a crisis of like what am I doing? Why am I doing this? You know, in terms of a, the career that I was in. Yeah. And that played itself out in my album. Um, Good. And so I, I get that, that, that trying to figure out what to do now while still, while still pursuing a passion. Correct. So right now the best place is to see myself as is on Instagram, but I, know that by next year I'm going to have a website. I've conceded that I cannot build the website. I am just going to hire that out. Fiverr has accepted <laughs> that. Like, I'm done trying to build them out because that's just not, it's just, it, it got, it was very much like an art piece where I got started on it and I got very frustrated and like, forget this and push it aside. And <laughs> yes, yeah. not doing that anymore. Um, so by next year I plan to have my, my website up and uh, places to purchase things online or stuff sure. like that. But right now Instagram is really the, the main, because honestly that's been a, big step for me just because i don't do social media like in my personal life mm-hmm. that's not a thing i do i'm not the type of person that likes to like talk on the camera and like yeah oh their everyday gosh life like i can't that's not me i can't do it <laughs> i know i am with you because it is i i will sit down i was doing this yesterday i was like what do i need to do for content because i hate creating this content yeah i hate creating content um I mean, part of it is like, oh, this could be fun. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's just like, but when do I do it? How do I do it? And how do I not look ridiculous? Well, I think everybody looks ridiculous. <laughs> I know everybody. I, it's, 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 it's practically well, expected <laughs> now. But I mean, I still feel very self-conscious if yeah. I'm walking down the sidewalk with my phone in front of my face, talking to it like I'm, yes. you know, like I'm talking to a crowd or something. Yeah. And I'm just like. Nah, I thought about doing something like that when I was going to go vote, you know, just being like just a general message of encouraging people right. to vote. And I was like, this feels weird. no one was around me. I was walking down the street by myself. It was OK. No one would have noticed. But no, nah, couldn't yeah. do it. Feels weird, doesn't it? It's yeah. too weird. Yeah, too weird. So I voted to, you know, did the standard <laughs> take a picture of the sticker and posted that. That works. Yeah. Well, I like with the content and stuff. Like that's something I struggle with on like creating art and especially with what i just talked about like how things just kind of and they're very sporadic going through the process of setting up the camera and making sure the lighting's right and all that that kind of like drains the whole creative process and that makes it like yeah there's something spontaneous about about creativity that you want and when you have to put this much effort into something that looks spontaneous it's like does it feel spontaneous anymore no it doesn't (laughs) It, it really does kind of lose its yeah. It's flair, it's flavor, so to speak. But I've been getting better about like overcoming like still feeling that but like overcoming it and still like So what is your Instagram something. handle so if people wanted to find you? The Artsy Alchemist. Um And where does the name come from? 
<laughs> um, I mean, I assume based on the background. Partially from the yeah, that's yeah. That, that's a large chunk of it. Um, honestly, if we really want to like get to the absolute where it first started, um, I don't know if you knew uh, the Cajun place on the east side. It used to be called Papa Roos, and then it was called oh, yeah. Papa Roos, and then it's no longer unfortunately there. Yes. So back when it was Papa Roos, and you sat inside. For a time period, the waitresses, like, you had to come up with a nickname in order to... Oh, serve. really? That was a thing that they did. Oh, that's cool. And uh, my work wife at the time, we, we went for lunch, and she very much was uh, the type to push me out of my, my boundaries, because, like, when the waitress said that, I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that. She's like, yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the crafty alchemist was, I'm like, fine, I'll call something <clears throat> like, I'm chemist, I do crafty things, there you go. Yeah. And then from when I wanted to start putting my art out there um because at first well, at first my art stuff it was just well we haven't got that we can get to the, how that even how i even got on this path but like uh i wanted something that was connected to, to, to my chemistry background but mm -hmm. that was i didn't want my name out there i didn't want my face out there because like at that time i didn't know sure. if i was going to quit that career and i didn't want like if i go to like an interview for a chemist position and they look on my social media and here's all this art stuff i'm not gonna look very like serious about well let's be honest <laughs> there could be far worse things to this find on, on social You're media so that's <laughs> you were so not wrong um, as, as one who who in, in in a previous life had to search when i was hiring new people the first thing i would do is go to their facebook page and see if it was public and i'll be like okay it's public what do you got there <sighs> okay yeah well uh thank you for your resume <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just, so I get it. Yeah. But, yeah, it could be far worse. This is very true. Very true. But, yeah, that's how that can. And I actually thoroughly enjoy that name. I, it's sometimes I feel like difficult for people to spell. <laughs> Getting all merges <laughs> together, which may not be the best, you know, as far as, like, marketing goes. But I thoroughly enjoy the name. No, it's a great name. Thanks. And it's not that hard to spell alchemist. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. But it also all kind of merges together too. And so when you have the artsy, and then the arts, it kind of you, there's heart in there, and then so they can kind of get like the brain can brain yeah confusion. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Can, can see multiple words. But it's it yeah, it's a good name. And I'm gonna it is stand, sticking to so it. So you're the artsy alchemist on on Instagram. So how did you get on this path? You were alluding to that. How yeah. did, how did you get onto this like, path? I haven't had a official art class since eighth grade. So like, okay. Literally no training. Uh, terrible breakup. And when I get in depressed type of things, I tend to like, I need to, I need to, I need to do, accomplish something. Sure. So whether that, like I built a bench at one point in time. Oh, I wow. I've done woodworking I just, and I decided to build a bench. <laughs> oh, wow. I needed to feel better about yeah. myself. Um, and on, uh, so I was going through like a really just terrible situation and on my youtube recommendations the this lady called the art the art sherpa funky bright colored hair mm -hmm. uh doing all these tutorials came up on my i'm like i could do this mm -hmm. sure so i went to michael's i got some paints and then i just kind of i just fell in love with it um nice did not expect that to happen like i had never painted before ever like i used to Drew a lot as a kid, even throughout college. Like my all of my like very science official no notes have sketches all over. <laughs> of course, <laughs> it <do>. yes. <laughs> like it's it, yeah. Um, I used to draw like comic strips in organic chemistry. Like there was this one. Like I, I was very into like stick figures, and like I remember there was this one comic strip strip I drew that like the little stick figure dude was in the lab and he was creating uh, TNT, and then he took that TNT to wrap it around his organic chemistry book. Well, <laughs> chemistry book. Um, <laughs> That was a thing. Because of course. Because that's what needed to happen. Yeah. Um, but uh so yeah, I really fell into it and then so then Christmas for a couple years, like everybody got all of my poor friends. All of my friends got paintings mm -hmm. <laughs> for Christmas. Uh but those were all like tutorials. Like I hadn't done any of my own work. Um and then my the the friend that I go to call to concerts with, she asked for a three piece of trees in Angie style. However that However, that Angie comes, style, yeah, nice. <laughs> right. So I created this three piece, and it is still one of my. That's when I was talking about the one hit wonder. That is still like one of my favorites. Like I love to bring to places, but I don't want to constantly show this one. But I created this three piece where I kind of started the tree style that I do with this like very curvy type of thing. It just mm -hmm. kind of flew, flown out of me and kind of came out. And like, yeah, so that was like one of my first like originals that I came up with. Yeah, and I still had no plan on like sharing it like on. 
anywhere anywhere else. yeah yeah um until i went to a art fest in beach grove and because i lived in that area for quite a while uh-huh. and i ended up talking with one of the artists there michael and he like we got we connected really really well his his art journey came through kind of like a therapeutic way as well he was yeah. a veteran and had a lot of pain and so like art was his therapy i talked with him about that how that it's was amazing how therapy. pain can bring out a lot of or emotional doesn't yeah or, or both yeah 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 it can bring out some some deep creative yeah sides I mean, of people back to full circle music like yeah <laughs> no, no exactly i mean gosh listen to a lot of lyrics it's like um one of my favorite lines from the movie High Fidelity. Um, if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with that movie. I'm terrible with movies. Oh, it's okay. Um, it, the line is, it's a John Cusack movie. Okay. It's from around 2000. It's, it's actually based off of a book, which they actually remain fairly faithful to the book, except they moved it from London to Chicago. Um, but the line is, are we miserable because we listen to pop music or do we listen to pop music because we're miserable? And the answer is yes. Yes. Both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's it, it, it goes on to be like, and, you know, it's no wonder so many people deal with pain, depression, whatever, because it's like, this is what they're listening to. This is this is your outlet. Yeah. You know, whether it's music, whether it's visual arts, whether it's theatrical arts, um, whatever kind of art you're working in, pain produces crazy things artistically it does it's all about perspective you know it is it helps put things in perspective helps you deal with that yes absolutely i mean that's how i had to that's how i dealt with as i call it my because my previous life was in politics okay and so that's i i often def- describe my album as my deconstruction album from politics okay so oh. um so i get it like that'd be very draining to be in politics. I it was. <laughs> it was. It was. Yes. Yes. It was. I'll just leave it at that. We'll it was. It that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It was. Um. So I and I asked. So we're coming to the to, to a close here, but I always ask this of all my guests because I want to make sure that we got everything. What have we missed? What is there mm-hmm. anything that you want to plug? Um. Any, uh, the, the, the first Friday coming up in December or like, you know, what is there, um, anything that, that we want to be plugging for, for the artsy alchemist? Follow my Instagram. Really? That's really where it's at right now. Yeah. Cause I, I, I will use that platform to promote when other events are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yep. That's the best place to. Just give it some love, like a heart. Isn't that hard? Just, you know, yeah, heart. just love it. Just want to say some love. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe leave a comment or two, or whatever. You know, you know, but just, just, just. You know. And you got a lot of cats. I have See two me. cats. Just two. <laughs> just two. Okay. They <laughs> make an appearance quite a bit. Well, because people love cats. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, and that's I, I try to make like going back to the whole like social media stuff i can't do like the regular blase this is sure like, but pe- but cats though but everybody loves but everybody, well, yeah, cats own social media exactly that's why you put them at the beginning of the video that's right and then it draws people <laughs> in and like oh there's art here too well hold, like, look at that like it's smart <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're, you're <laughs> that's very called, smart it's called strategy <laughs> that is great strategy they're stinking cute look at my last one i put my i have myself a beer dragon and uh pet smart had beer dragon costumes for sale for halloween no way oh yeah they did a whole <laughs> section a whole section <laughs> a whole section <laughs> wow it was beautiful um and so he had a little sheriff's hat and nice yeah, that's a thing but yeah that is fantastic so it's you know Angie Seltz, the artsy alchemist. Thank you for being on the show. I really do appreciate it. You've been a wonderful guest. Thank you for having me. I've enjoyed this. And if you have enjoyed what you have heard, you are going to enjoy this one last plug that I'm going to do because I'm at the Engine Room Recording Company and it is located in Broad Ripple Village, just north of downtown Indianapolis. And they specialize in making your projects go. Podcasters, bands, audiobookers, rappers, singers, songwriters, and everyone in between The Engine Room Recording Company has the engineers, the equipment, and the environment to fuel your projects. Check out Broad Ripple's recording studio by visiting for more information on their services, artists they've recorded, and gear they have at Engine Recording App, and the gear that they have at EngineRoomRecordingCompany.com. 
and be sure to visit their Instagram page by searching at Engine Room, Engine Room Recording Company. Thank you again, Angie. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Fun. This has been Josh Gillespie. My guest has been Angie Salty Artsy Alchemist. This has been the Voices of Indie. We'll be back again next time. Thanks. <laughs>